Hello, everyone, and welcome to Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. I'm your host, retired NYPD Sergeant Bill Cannon, a 27-year veteran of the NYPD. You know, folks, with this Madeline Soto case, we're all sort of hanging on at the edge of our seats, waiting for new information. And one of the things that we've all come to expect is the results of the autopsy. And yesterday, without really much fanfare, a message came out from the medical examiner's office. And I'll show you on the thumbnail here. Medical examiner won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence equals homicide. So they just told you the manner of death, didn't they? Without inadvertently, without telling you the manner of death, they just told you the manner of death. Medical examiner won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence. That equals a homicide. The definition of of homicide is death caused by another. And of course, there's many ways to do that, but they're saying it's a domestic violence murder, which means one of the people in that household that lived in that household caused the death of Madeline Soto. It's, the, it's that simple. And most of us believe this person who you see up on the screen right now is the person. Under Florida, uh, first degree murder under Florida statute section 78204, murder is broadly defined as the unlawful killing of a human being. The degree of murder is based on how murder is carried out. Florida law states that homicide is a first degree murder when the killing was carried out with intent and prior thought of planning often referred to as premeditation. A homicide may also be considered first degree murder if a killing was committed during the course of committing another crime, including, among others, arson, sexual battery, robbery, burglary, kidnapping, aggravated child abuse, aggravated abuse of an elderly person or a disabled adult. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it obviously qualifies in this case is that this is a first degree murder. So even though the medical examiner went through great pains to say, Florida law says I'm not allowed to release the manner of death because it's a juvenile and it's a domestic violence case. But he just did, or he she just did, whoever the medical examiner is, because they just told us it's a murder, didn't they? They inadvertently told us that this is a murder. So remember, we, we've gone over the manner of death is homicide, suicide, accidental, natural, or undetermined. So five ways for manner of death. Homicide, suicide, natural, accidental, or undetermined. This is a homicide, right? It's not a suicide. It's not accidental. It's not natural, and it's not undetermined. So the police know, you can bet the police know the manner of death. They're told that we all know now because they inadvertently told us through that, through, through them saying we're not allowed to release the manner of death because under Florida law, you can't release the manner of death if it's a domestic violence and if it's a juvenile. You know, I have questions about that also. And, and in, in New York, and that's what I don't mean to ever imply that New York is better, has better laws or anything than any other state. But I believe that when someone's dead, usually that person no longer has an expectation of privacy because the person is no longer alive. So that's why I question this also is like, are they hiding behind this law that they don't want to release this? Because usually when someone is dead, even if they're a juvenile, their expectation of privacy is over because the person's no longer alive. Uh, and that's something that I would question. But if that's the Florida law, they're going by it. But I just, I can't help but say that in this case, and it says it all right there, 
medical examiner won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence equals a homicide. Now we get to the cause of death. And the cause of death, as you know, could be blunt trauma, strangulation, asphyxia, poisoning, gunshot, stab, anything like that. That is the cause. And it definitely differs from the manner. Uh, and that, I think, will have to come out if this case goes to trial, or even if Stefan Stearns pleads guilty. And I, I would find it hard to imagine that Stefan Stearns, if he's the perpetrator of this murder, which I think is a very high percentage that he is, I don't see him, if it does, I don't see them offering a plea deal. And number two, I don't see him pleading guilty because this is a death penalty case. And therefore the prosecutor, I don't think is gonna offer anything to this to this savage who they already have 60 charges holding over him at Florida versus Stearns. And this was uh, a while ago when they, the state attorney general issued these other charges, eight counts of sexual battery on a child under 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child 12 to 18, seven counts of lewd and lascivious molestation, 40 counts of unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child, 10 or more images. So we all know how horrific this individual is. And that is the underlying felony that qualifies Stefan Stearns for the death penalty. Those horrific charges that we just saw. Someone in the chat brought up the other day, and I thought this is a, a distinct possibility because no one's telling us. Could he have pictures on his phone of Madeline when she was dead? Could that happen? Could that, and that would be like, oh my God. You talk about powerful, powerful evidence, but is that a possibility? Yeah, it is a possibility. So, so why is this bothering us? Because the Kissimmee police are taking their time and making sure they do everything correctly. They don't have any time frame. We have to get we have to file these charges right away because he's got all he can handle with the charges he has right now. But we, as the public, and we, as the people following this case, and we who want to see justice, we want to know that he's getting charged with this, don't we? We want to know. So, folks, you're about to enter true crime from a police perspective. And you're about to enter it off the cuff. You're about to enter the police off the cuff zone. There has to be some common sense. Yes, sir, they have the car stopped in Tampa for Ranch Michael Biden. We still don't know who pulled the trigger. You know, I always like to go into the chat and see what the people that follow this show are thinking. Because sometimes you guys come up with some really good things in the chat. And I don't, I'm not, look, I agree. Someone once said that was a brilliant teacher said one time that for my whole life, I'll always be a student. Once I stop learning that's when I stopped growing. And I thought that was such a profound statement. I feel the same way about this. Although I have a lot of experience in this field, I can always be taught something. And sometimes you guys in the chat teach me something. And beautiful, messy ball, Deb Galloway, because we don't know what he was the one that killed her. It seems to have happened in mom's home when mom was there from the little evidence that is known. Well, beautiful, um, messy uh, ball. Yeah. If they're saying this is a domestic violence, and there's, there's a new revelation, right? Then where did this happen? 
You bet it happened in the home. Isn't that what they're telling us? They don't want to tell us anything, but guess what? They told us a lot. Susan King, thank you so much for the $20 super sticker. I suspect that domestic violence indicates that she was killed in the home. Yes, uh, Suzanne, I was just going over that. And so what does that also mean? Uh, does that also mean that Jennifer Soto is, is in the mix, is potentially an accomplice to this? I have said this from the very beginning, uh, that yes, I think that Jennifer Soto has to be considered a suspect. Phoebe from the chat, police off the cuff. Wow. I say that if I can't learn something new every day, I might as well just sit on the sofa eating bonbons and watching soap operas. Phoebe, you hit it on the head. You said a little more eloquently than I did. But yes, you hit it right on the head. I think we all still also always have to believe that we can learn something new. And I, I try to live my life that way. Uh, DCPNW, interesting to think if she was dead before she was dead, before she got home from the party, or if it happened by mom at home Sunday night. DCPNW, that's something we don't know right now. And that's what we're, we, we are all uh, sitting on the edge of our seat to learn. Pessa, I have a tinfoil hat that maybe she was pregnant. That is why they're not releasing autopsy results. It can have potential political implications since Florida has outlawed abortion. But Pessa, she is deceased. So that could mean something in, in the case. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Fred Field, I think I read somewhere that Jennifer took heavy sleeping aids and possibly slept through it. I, But, you know, Fred Field, she couldn't have slept through five years of this abuse. And that's what really gets me uh, trying to think that, you know, she's innocent. And, uh, you know, guys, some of the things that's been reported on this case, I had thought that early on in this case, once the first or second interview, that Jennifer Soto would have lawyered up, would have invoked counsel. And apparently from yesterday's, and you can't even, I'm going to play a little bit of it later on, but you can't even call Betty Holland, Chief Betty Holland's update yesterday, a press conference. She basically gave us nothing. She really repeated a lot of the things that she repeated in the first press conference. And there was nothing new that I could tell from it. Uh, Phoebe, not releasing the manner of death may be so gross that it would shock you all into deep anger. Uh, well, Phoebe, I, I, I just sort of went into it that they really did release the manner of death accidentally. They Because they told us it's almost like what, what color was George Washington's white horse? Well, I just told you the answer. And when you look at this thumbnail that I put up for the show, Madeline Soto, medical examiner, won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence. <laughs> it's just like they just told us the manner of death in that statement. They just told us the manner of death is homicide. How do you, else do you have a domestic violence death? Homicide, again, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the definition, means death caused by another. That's the definition. Of homicide and then before i went into how it could be a first degree murder and of course first degree mur and murder is differs from homicide because it's the unlawful taking of someone's life homicide could be uh not not criminal in, in nature you could be performing cpr on someone and your actions could kill them and the medical examiner could rule that a homicide, but what was it criminal? No, there was no intent, there was no recklessness, there was none of the elements that would be necessary to charge a, a charge of murder. So, homicide simply again, death caused by another. I'm going to put this up from Court TV, and they spoke about this yesterday. Um, and I'll put it up on the screen, it's a little clearer. Um, Thursday that it cannot release its report on Madeline Soto's autopsy. Okay, you're going to say, Vinny, that's, well, what are you telling us? You're telling us nothing here. This is nothing. This is a big nothing, right? No, 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 no. The reason why they can't 
release it. Take a listen. Just like last hour, listen to every word. The medical examiner's office said the report is confidential and exempt from being publicly released because it involves a, quote, minor whose death was related to an act of domestic violence, end quote. The they just told you then. Isn't, isn't, could that be any clearer? It's like they're telling you they can't do it, but at the same time, they just told you. They just told you it's a homicide. The medical examiner's office said the report is confidential and exempt from being publicly released because it involves a minor whose death was related to an act of domestic violence. Could that be any clearer? That How could it be related to an act of domestic violence unless another person caused her death equals homicide? The quote is from the law down there. The quote is from the law. If a minor is killed as a result of de domestic violence, those autopsy results don't become public. New law in Florida. What are they telling us? The death is related to an act of domestic violence. Oh, we've narrowed the suspects now. We've narrowed them way down. Way down. This is a big He's right. This is a big deal. This is something that we didn't know until yesterday when it was released. But it seems like it went over everyone's head. No one realized that by reporting this, they were telling us, they told us two things. One, it's a domestic violence homicide, right? Two, it happened in the home. Is that not extremely important did we know that before yesterday i mean we could all we could all guess conjecture but did we specifically know that we didn't they just told us this was a domestic violence homicide so all you folks that would say that stuff on stearns didn't live there i guess this puts him living there unless this comes back to being Jennifer. And some of you guys have said that to me. Some of you have said it's Jennifer. But you know what, to me, besides the, the ridiculous amount of evidence uh, against Stefan Stearns reg in regarding what's up on the screen now, Florida versus Stearns, all those charges, has anyone ever rode around in their car with a dead body? And apparently, according to the police, video showed him riding around in the complex that they lived in with the body of Madeline Soto. To me, that is like, that is ridiculously powerful evidence. How did they know that she was dead? I think there's at least two ways. One, he had pictures or video on his phone of it. Two, they had video in the car and she appeared to be dead at that point. And there's other evidence I'm sure they have to back up those facts. But think of that. Think of how scary that is. So we know something today that went over, sort of went over everyone's head yesterday because usually... YouTube would be buzzing with this information. There would be 20 different stories. There'd be 20 different content creators going with this. I don't know if many people realize that this was a big deal. Yeah. The medical examiner is telling us something very important by not telling us, by not reporting it, because he can't because of the law. But the medical examiner won't release the autopsy findings because it's domestic violence equals a homicide, equals death caused by another. I mean, again, powerful, powerful evidence without reporting anything to us. What powerful evidence. And he's not allowed to tell you. He just did. He just did tell you, didn't he? Or she.
I don't know who the, exactly who the medical examiner is. Folks, if you're looking for a true crime podcast that's from a police perspective, then you're in the right place. And if you're not subscribed to us, go on our YouTube, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell, hit that like button, and share us with your friends and your family. And make comments. We love to read your comments. I love as often as I can, as many as I can respond to, to them. I can't respond to all of them. I would do nothing else but. And folks, if you want to contribute to us, we have a Patreon with three different levels. And we also have a YouTube channel membership with Count them Five. And we're growing. Our YouTube channel is growing. And if you saw, I posted before, we have a new website. I'm still doing uh, little odds and ends to it, but it's police off the cuff. 676, which is my old shield number, shield number as a sergeant with the NYPD. Police off the cuff, 676.com. Welcome to go on. Take a look. I'm gonna I'm working on putting a blog on it so I can have a lot of more interaction with you guys. And uh, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a great thing. Anyway, let's get back to, to this case. So we know we know that now it was just reported that it was a homicide, wasn't it? development tonight wftv now let's go through the the timeline once again um if it's the first time you're hearing this little girl's name i'm going to tell you exactly what happened here and what we know it starts sunday february 25th madeline soto celebrates her 13th birthday her mom unable her mom jen unable to go because she was working so she's not there We've seen pictures. There are plenty of other people there. It's at a relative's house. Um, and that's the dress she was wearing. And she was running around outside as well. Monday, February 26th. That's when Madeline Soto is reported missing. 840. Stefan Sturms, the boyfriend, the live-in boyfriend of mom, claims to have dropped her off 0.4 miles away from Hunters Creek Middle School. 430. Jen, the mom, goes to pick Madeline up but learns that she never made it to school. And then at 8 o'clock, Jen reports Madeline missing. Next day, Jen Soto, February 27th, and Stefan Stern sit down with WFTV for an interview. Stern appears very emotional about Madeline's disappearance, claiming the worst part is not knowing. Jen states the last time she saw Madeline was Sunday night, or the last time she spoke to her was Sunday night. Wednesday, February 28th, the search for Madeline. Several agencies combined to aid in this search. Over 50 members of an emergency response team are present. Later that day, Wednesday, Wednesday night now, February 28th, this was the big, big revelation. Stefan Stearns is arrested on unrelated charges, but are they unrelated? Two counts of sexual battery and possession of material of sexual performance by a child. That victim, we believe, is Madeline on his phone that he accidentally, he told the officers when he handed over the phone, I accidentally did a factory reset, but here you can take a look at it. Well, they took a look and they found stuff. Thursday, February 29th, police announced they believe Madeline is already dead and named Stearns as the prime suspect. They believe she was never dropped off. Then they explained that Stearns was spotted ditching her backpack and school-issued laptop the morning of her disappearance. 7.35 in the dumpster in the, in the neighborhood. He's getting rid of the backpack and the laptop. They also claim that they, they, they see him returning in his car to the neighborhood with Madeline in there, and she's dead at 8.19. Flash forward, Friday, March 1st, Madeline's body is discovered off of Hickory Tree Road, 17 miles from her home. Police say that Stefan Stearns was spotted nearby changing a tire that afternoon, around 1.30 or so. Friday, March 12th, 60 more charges filed against Stearns. All of these, all of these, we believe, uh, involved the um, abuse and battery and molestation of Madeline. Let's bring in our guests. So, folks, unbelievable, right? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of you guys in the chat, to me, one of the most powerful pieces of evidence. And besides, look, none of us here 
none of us following this case saw the images that were on Stefan Stearns' phone. And someone very cleverly, or someone very astutely in the chat says, how do you know that he doesn't have pictures on, her, on his phone of Madeline dead? And you know something? I don't know that. And either do you. But when I heard that, that made absolute sense to me because he's driving around with her in his car. And apparently the police said that she was already dead. So think of that. Think of how powerful evidence, how they obviously they can reproduce those images at a trial if necessary. Deb Galloway from the chat. There are so many possibilities. I do trust law enforcement knows what they're doing. And when they have all their evidence, it will all come out. I agree with you. And, and they're, um, they are working very hard on this. Uh, Roseanne from the chat, being a disgusting human doesn't mean he is the M. Roseanne, you're, you're hundred percent right. And until we have all the information until law enforcement has all the information, they haven't pulled the trigger yet on the arrest for the murder, have they? No, they have not. Pessa, maybe he was mourning her in a weird way. Maybe he took advantage. Oh, my God. I don't even want to talk about that. Um, Poppy Pop, uh, Sybil Bergeron, especially not a guy like him. You have to really, really love someone to do something like that for someone else or be extremely scared. You know, one of the things that, um, and I'll play a little bit later of uh, Chief Holland, who gave the press conference last week. She gave an update yesterday. And if you read the comments, most of the people that watched the update were just totally disappointed. Like there was really no new information. But sometimes if you listen closely enough, you'll come up with some information that perhaps went over our heads a little bit, you know? And of course, the, the news reporters asked the question uh, about, is Jennifer Soto a suspect? And Chief Holland says, and she said this at the initial press conference, everyone in the family is a suspect. We haven't, we haven't cleared anyone. Crimson Clover from the chat, if he came back to the apartment with the body, how did he get her into the flat again, dead without anyone or camera seeing that? Then back in the car again to dump the body. Crimson Clover, I don't know the answer to that. That's that's a good question. But I think the police do know the answer to that. And uh, yeah, as we see the timeline and some of the things that occurred, it doesn't make any real sense to us, does it? Fuzzy Docs, you don't care how scared the mother was. He's behind bars now, so she can't say anything but she doesn't. Uh, you're right, Fuzzy Doxy. JPL, uh, J. the Stelladoro. Oh, I'm almost positive this guy was giddy about having a deceased child. They could do whatever he wanted with how depraved and disgusting of a person. Yeah, well, this case is really uh, horrific in so many different ways. Carolyn D., it takes time for law enforcement to receive information on devices. Maybe that is why it's taking time. Uh, Nina Shandra, Sergeant Bill Cannon, Mr. Beginning was putting away some stuff. We'll watch from the start later. Nina Shandra, I know um, you're from LinkedIn. I I, uh, I met you on LinkedIn the other day. Welcome to the show. Uh, Fremont Path Fund, I think the police have told her not to say anything like in the case of the two uh, Kansas moms. Well, look, the police will, will, will tell you, you know, don't take interviews from the press. Look, we've, saw, we've seen a lot of things even on YouTube. Uh, and it, it, uh, someone reported definitively that um, that Jennifer Soto has lawyered up. And I had really believed that from in the beginning. But apparently, when Chief Betty Campbell was asked that, she said, no, everyone in the family is cooperating. So that would say to me that Jennifer Soto did not lawyer up, but could she have still lawyered up and did she say that anyway? I think that's that's a possibility. Sybil Bergeron, 
Poppy Pop, exactly right. A parent would be the only person I think would even do such a thing. This guy isn't going anywhere, even without murder charges. Sybil, you, you're 100% right. And, you know, I'm tired of saying that, you know, and you, you, you say it ad nauseum. Law enforcement needs to cross their T's and dot their I's. Okay, we, we understand. It has to be quite a thorough investigation. They want to make sure they don't miss anything. So we spoke earlier on this, and I had brought this up. Where are the most um, where are the most important crime scenes in this case? What is the most important crime scene in this case? And I said it very early on, the home, the home. And I say every time that we have a missing person, including the Kansas moms, including all the missing persons that we've, we've covered uh, very recently, one of the first things you do in a missing persons case as, as the police is you search the home of the missing person. And that can be done. There's no search warrant needed. That can be done with the consent, of course, of the people reporting the missing person. Because there's at that point, there's no criminality. However, once Madeline Soto's body was found on March 1st, I believe 17 miles from her home in a location where Stefan Stearns was witnessed changing a tire, then a search warrant is needed to search this house. What else is, is an important crime scene? Well, obviously, the location where the body's found is one of the most important. Uh, Amanda from the chat, sadly, bipolar can make a person very unstable. So if Jennifer Soto didn't know until that night, she could have had a very crazy reaction to finding out. It seems the attempted cover-up was a rushed plan. You know, Amanda, when many people that you meet when you investigate crimes like murder uh, have serious issues, you know, mental health issues, alcohol issues, drug issues, uh, in this case, uh, bipolar issues, um, that can't be your concern when you're in law enforcement. Your concern in law enforcement is to build the strongest case possible against the people who are responsible for this. It's not your responsibility to worry about what their mental health issues are. I'm just, and I'm not great uh, point, but I'm not trying to put it down. I'm just trying to point out what the mentality of law enforcement is. Simi Sharp, the public does not need to know much until charges are brought, in my opinion. After that, we will want to know what they have for evidence. Simi Sharp, you're right. No one has a right to know what the police know right now and what they're withholding. You're right. No one has a right. You know who really pushes the hardest, of course, is the press. They want to know. They want to know what the hell's going on. They want to know the results of the autopsy. They want to know the manner and cause of death. Toxicology. It's about six weeks right now since this happened, we believe, on February 26th. The toxicology could be done at this point. Many people in the chat have told me, oh, she was drugged. Well, uh, we don't know that. We don't know that uh, until the toxicology comes back, right? Uh, awesome Maddox 12, how frustrating. I pray that Madeline gets full justice sooner than later. We all do. And that's why we're following this. We want justice. Uh, JPL, I could just see this lady trying to use a mental illness as part of her defense. Well, JPL, uh, she hasn't been charged yet, you know, and maybe she won't. Maybe she, maybe she didn't have anything to do with this. And I, what I have said many times on this show, I think that she could possibly charge through omission and not commission. And I've explained with Mike Geary, my co-host and attorney, that omission is failure to act when you have a legal responsibility to act. Is that clear to everyone? Omission, commission is an overt act, something you do to get a specific result. Omission is failure to act. Failure to act when the law says you must act. You have a legal responsibility to act. 
And I had uh, Michelle Jowers um, neglect. Um, you know, I'm not going to say neglect, but perhaps failing to see something, failure to act when what was going on, what was going on in our house was going back for five years. Is it believable that Jennifer Soto didn't see any signs of it? Is that believable? Mothers out there, women out there, men out there, is that believable? I want to ask you guys, uh, Simi Sharp, I remember when you explained that. Well, I just want to know from you guys, is it believable? And, you know, many people have come through on this channel, uh, have said, and many people have come forward and admitted to being the victims of abuse themselves. And I really appreciated all these people that came forward because it's a really tough thing to do. And I think when you share that with this community, people really appreciate it, myself included. But do we believe, and I can't say collectively, individually, uh, do we believe that Jennifer Soto had no idea what was going on? Um, do we believe that? If you believe... I'm going to take a little poll here. If you believe that Jennifer Soto is 100% innocent, maybe I shouldn't stack the deck that much. If you believe that Jennifer Soto had no idea what was occurring going back five years, put a one in the chat. Put a one. All right. If you believe that Jennifer Soto knew what was going on and failed to act, in essence, guilt through omission. Put a two in the chat. Because sometimes maybe my cop instincts kick in, not sometimes, all the time. And uh, I think like a cop too much, but that's how I think, and I can't change it. But I've been uh, criticized for that, and that's okay. Uh, Fremont Pathfinder. Her so-called ADHD signs were probably stress-related. No, it's not believable for that length of time. Okay, Fremont Pathfinder, I, I happen to agree with you. Uh, um, Judy B., no, not believable at all. Candy Kitten, sadly my mother was too wrapped up in herself to notice what was happening to me. Candy Kitten, I'm sorry that happened to you, and uh, this happens more often than we would ever want to believe, you know? JPL, uh, the, uh, Jay the Stelladoro, how depraved for a mother to just blow off SA. She had a choice and she chose to let this man uh, get away with what he was getting away with with Madeline. Um, Julia Ann, no way, thank heavens, Madeline wasn't pregnant by the monster. That info will be kept sealed because she's a minor, correct? Well, right now, Julia Ann, they're not, they're not releasing anything from the autopsy. They inadvertently told us, of course, that this is a homicide through trying not to tell us. Medical examiner won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence equals a homicide. Is there anyone out there that isn't putting one and one equal two equals two with this statement? If it's domestic violence, doesn't it have to be death caused by another, doesn't that equal homicide? If anyone disagrees with me, please say so, because I'm putting two and two together. And, and as I said, the uh, so most of you guys in the, a couple of you uh, think that she didn't know, but most of you think that she's complicit in this case. Most, a, a good majority. Uh, Someone put three. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Does that mean a little bit of both? You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, so, so, yeah, to, to, to think that um, that she knew nothing about this, I, 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 just, I just don't get it. And then some of the things that she said were inaccuracies. And if they're, and that's being kind, is it inaccurate or is it a lie? What is it? Is what she said inaccurate or is it 
Is it alive? That that's what I would like to know. Um, is it is something that she said? And we all remember. There's the picture from that, and like you see, Stefan Stearns in the background. This was the interview that uh, that she was asked questions, and her answers didn't seem to make a hell of a lot of sense as Stefan Stearns sat in the background, almost looming, looming over this interview. You know, I thought a little bit scary when I watched that interview, but it, there seemed to be. You know, many people on YouTube have analyzed that body language experts and uh, very scary, a lot of it. Soto saw Maddie. New documents show that Maddie's mom told deputies on February 26th that she saw her daughter getting dressed for school at 8 o'clock that morning and that her boyfriend then took the teen to school. But since that initial report was taken, we learned from the Orange County Sheriff that Maddie was likely dead earlier than that. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. Channel 9 has been going through statements. That's pretty scary that uh, that Chief Mena, early on in this investigation, we believed that she was already dead. So then if they believe she was already dead at this hour, then isn't what Jennifer Soto said a lie? Isn't that a lie? What do you guys think? How could it be true? It's It's got to be a lie, doesn't it? Uh, I, I don't think there's any truth to it. Poppy Pop, I don't understand how no one reacted to my disgust towards my uncle for years and still, but I also think people tend to blind themselves to stuff they feel is hard to handle. You know, Poppy Pop, I think, I think that's true. I think people, uh, they try to sweep things under the rug, sometimes things that are difficult to deal with. Uh, Christina from the chat. No, she knew if you spend time with your kids and let them know they can speak about anything to you, no matter what, you'd know. Christina, I 100% agree with you. And you have to have um, that relationship with your kids also. Uh, Phoebe, more evidence is needed either way. Yeah, look, that's why um, this investigation is not over. It's nowhere me near to being over. And that's why the police, and all, as I said, I'll play a little bit. I couldn't even call it really a press conference yesterday. It was more or less giving out information, you know, more and repeating the information she already gave at the last press conference. So many people yesterday, when Chief Betty Holland called it an update, it really didn't update anything. Uh, and that's where people got a little annoyed with it from Stephen Stearns and Soto trying to piece together what happened in the last few hours of the little girl's life, starting with our interview of the couple. Her mom told us last week. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. But in that same interview, then said. I was the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah. Detectives believe Maddie was likely dead early Monday morning because a video timeline shows Maddie's belongings being dumped in a dumpster at 735 by Stearns. At 819, Sheriff Mina said video shows Maddie in Stearns' vehicle believed to be deceased. Since then, the case has moved to Kissimmee Police, and sources tell us that Soto has been interviewed multiple times by detectives at two agencies and that they are looking closely at all the statements she's made. But officially, Kissimmee police won't comment. So this initial report also shows that Stearns told investigators that after Maddie got out of his car, she stopped to look in that book bag before he drove away. That same book bag was found actually in the dumpster. After her death, he then said he went home for about an hour after going to the vape store and running errands. He was home that day until 2.30. Detectives say a tip showed him changing a flat tire not far from where the little girl's body was found that afternoon. So, uh, when you watch that and you, you hear about all these flagrant inconsistencies, 
How does it make you feel about Jennifer Soto now? Is she just confused or is she lying? What do you think? Confusion or out and out lying? Uh, Fuzzy Doxy, that's a great statement because I don't think I have that percentage. Bill is always right. So far, everything he's given his opinion on has been 100%. Well, Fuzzy Doxy, thank you. But I'm wrong, frequently wrong. Uh, I try to use my experience to come up with stuff, but I, I, I'm wrong sometimes, believe me. Nancy H., lots and lots of children never tell. They are their loved ones are threatened. Predators are really good at manipulating their victims. That's Nancy H. That's 100% true. And you hear the term grooming. And that's what I bet you Stefan Stearns was a professional at grooming, you know, was uh, that's how he lived his life. And I always said that another scary thing in this case is that you can bet that you go back in Stefan Stearns' criminal career, his abuse career, that he didn't start five years ago, that Stefan Stearns has tons of victims. Uh, I just, I think that that has to be looked into also. Oh, Phoebe, the three means we need more evidence. Phoebe, <laughs> I respect you for putting that, and that's exactly what the Kissimmee police are doing. They're collecting more evidence, right? They want to make sure that this is a slam dunk case because and is there ever anything known as a slam dunk in the legal profession? No, because you never, ever know what a jury is going to do. Um, so there's no such thing. Uh, Pine Needle Protagonist. I believe Jennifer Soto. This is from the chat. Pine Needle Protagonist. I like your uh, name. I believe Jennifer Soto convinced herself it wasn't happening because she wanted to keep her fantasy of a perfect life keeping up appearances was way more important to my mom even after knowing again someone came forward and admitting uh, admitting that this something like this happens up my needle protagonist god bless you and thank you for uh sharing that with the group here uh larry jensen why did they split up in the past could it be that she the mom suspected something could be that hasn't been offered by anyone. Terry Ellis, it's hard to believe she didn't know. My mother said she didn't, but I think she's a liar. So, so Terry Ellis, obviously, something like this happened to you also. Uh, bless you. Uh, Nina Shandra, the mother definitely knew. Question is, did they kill her in the home or boyfriend did it on the way to the school? Well, I think one of the things that the... Um, uh, again, I go back to this thumbnail for the show. Medical examiner won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence equals homicide. What he's telling us is that this happened in the home. Isn't he? Isn't he telling us that? Or is that also the medical examiner being privy to the photos that were on Stefan Stearns' phone indicating an ongoing course of conduct over several years, which from many of the photos indicated that this course of conduct took place in, in, Madel in Jennifer Soto's home, which was Madeline Soto's home, which Stefan Stearns lived in. Could that be what the medical examiner was adding to his report and believing that this occurred inside the home. Uh, Schmitty, good to see you. 100% agree at Christina. My mother can practically read my mind even at the age of 92. Uh, Pauline Buckles, Jennifer and Stefan broke up for a period of time, but he probably convinced her he was a changed man, so she let him back in. You know, Golden Pole, did you all see the mom's leg shaking? During her interview, she was lying. Golden Pole, that's, you know, there's many indicators of deception. Could that be one of them? Yeah. The body language indicated when you watched the whole interview there, 
neither Jennifer Soto nor Stefan Stearns could look straight ahead, could look into the eyes of the interviewer. That is definitely indicative of deception, 100%. That's indicative of being deceptive. So very perceptive of you to, to state that and to, to see that. Uh, Alicia Velasquez, do you think she committed? No, I do not think she committed suicide. I think she was murdered 100%. Uh, and again, um, why would someone drive around in their car with a dead body if the person committed suicide? You would leave the person at that scene because you had nothing to do with it, correct? But Mike Geary says all the time the term consciousness of guilt. Stefan Stearns was trying to hide his guilt because he did something horrific. What other reason would anyone have for driving around with a dead body in their car? Is there any reason? Can you think of any reason why someone would do that? Uh, Mom to Jess and Jack, thank you for the 499 super sticker. There is no way that a mother would miss her daughter's 13th birthday unless it was a surprise party and she wasn't invited. Wow, very perceptive mom to Jess and Jack. And uh, many people have commented on that here, that what do you mean she had to work, you know? And look, I missed a lot of events, my, my son's events when they were growing up. But, you know, I had a job where you couldn't say I'm going home. It's my son's birthday. You couldn't say I'm going home, period, when something happened. You were there till you were finished. And that could mean two or three or four days later, you could be at work. I remember sometimes my kids would ask me when I was coming home. They wouldn't see me for four or five days. That was the kind of job I had, you know. As, as someone said to me one time, that's the life we chose. Or it chose us either way. But, yeah, so I could, you know, sometimes my wife would... <laughs> Some make me feel a little guilty. You missed a lot of things. And I'm just like, you're right, I did. But did my kids want for anything? Did they ever need something and not get it? Did they ever not have great things, uh, clothing, toys, food, games, play sports, join clubs? They, they had all of those things. Because I and you, my wife, worked very hard and provided it for them. So don't try to lay that guilt on me because I don't feel guilty because on one hand, yeah, I felt bad about missing things. On the other hand, uh, my kids were provided for very well. Very well. Terry Ellis, mom to Jess and Jack. Some mothers don't care about their kids. She absolutely won't, would miss the birthday party. If she didn't give a crap, I don't even think I had a 13th or, or a day party. Um, Poppy Pop, I think we can't judge just one thing. Leg shakes or maybe stuttering or not be able to look into the camera, etc. But when we get several things, like her different stories, etc., then it's another thing. Poppy Pop, it's always, I'll use the legal term, the totality of the circumstances. Yes, you take the totality of the circumstances. And that is an indicator, not just one thing. You're 100% correct. Christina, even if Stearns did it to Maddie, Jen will not be able to live normally ever again. She will have to live with that, what she didn't do for Maddie. And also, I'm sure people won't be kind, rightly or wrongly. Christina, you're 100% right. Uh, look, anyone, you talk to anyone, uh, Lieutenant Peter Pranzo, agree, Bill, NYPD was very demanding. Lieutenant Pete Pranzo, guys, if you don't know who he is, he's in the chat. Retired NYPD lieutenant, a real hero, real hero of mine. Uh, he has a book called Harlem Raiders. Super, super great man. And uh, he lived the same life I did, you know, and it's the life we chose, you know. Uh, Raquel Patton, part one, someone posted a short. It was Maddie at her party. 
looking at something, holding something the way she might hold a phone. You only see her arms. Tina King, I'd be mad if others planned a party and didn't let me know. Yeah. Uh, Fremont Pathfinder, detectives in big cities should make a ton of money. Such a harsh job. Yeah, I agree. It is. Uh, Nancy H., those are material things. But you're right. You're right, Nancy H., but we gave them love, too. That was the most important thing. But we also provided for them, and that's important. I think it's very important. Uh, Roseanne, I miss things, but also tried to schedule around events so I could be home. You just won't close those pesky hospitals. <laughs> I guess you're a nurse, Roseanne, huh? Uh, Simi Sharp, my daddy was military, so he also couldn't make everything but I'm daddy's girl, and he, we didn't want for anything. Very good. That's great. Uh, Miss Sash, 76, I wouldn't miss any of my kids' birthdays, let alone their special ones like 13th, 16th, 21st, 30th. It's just now. Yeah, look, you know, guys, we try to do the best we can. You know, I want to play a little bit. This is um, This is Chief Betty Campbell yesterday, and this wasn't received well by the public. Uh she didn't call it a press conference. She called it an update. So let me play a little bit of this, and you can judge for yourself what you think of this. Thank you for joining us today and allowing us to provide an update on our investigation into Madeline Soto's disappearance and death. Madeline was reported missing on Monday, February 26, 2024, just one day after her 13th birthday. Since then, our investigation has been relentless, fueled by the unwavering commitment to uncover the truth. During our forensic investigation, we uncovered disturbing evidence, graphic images, and videos depicting crimes being committed. It was during this examination that we learned we needed to act swiftly to remove the suspects, Stefan Stearns, from our streets. Despite the arrest, our investigation into her disappearance remained ongoing. We understand the importance of thoroughly exploring every lead and piece of evidence. The Kissimmee Police Department, along with other law enforcement agencies in Central Florida, continue their search for Madeline for the next several days following her disappearance, and we turn to the public for help. During this time, our investigators combed through a significant number of tips, and on March 1st, we received information placing Stern's vehicle in a rural area of St. Cloud, where ultimately Madeline's body was discovered. We are all deeply saddened by the outcome of Madeline's disappearance. The Kissimmee Police Department continues to piece together the timeline leading up to the events that occurred. I want to address some questions we are receiving from the media in everyone's effort to keep the community up to date on this tragedy. At this time, Stearns is facing a total of 60 charges related to our investigation. This includes sexual battery, lewd and lascivious molestation, and unlawful possession of materials depicting sexual performance by a child. These charges reflect the meticulous work of our law enforcement community. Our detectives also are working closely with the state's attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit and the medical examiner's office on the investigation. Death investigations are complex. Tasks like forensic analysis and thorough interviews are crucial and require careful attention. It is vital to address these misconceptions in the pursuit of justice while preserving the integrity to the case. During our investigation, excuse me, during an investigation such as this one, we gather additional information from individuals close to the deceased. Each person interviewed is treated as involved until proven otherwise. This is a. See, that was a big thing that she said. Each person is treated. Basically, everyone's a suspect until they're cleared, until evidence dictates otherwise. And even if you, at one point in an investigation you clear someone, they could always be brought back into it if you find out additional information or new information standard protocol to ensure all the facts are uncovered. During our investigation, we have interviewed many individuals. Each interview has been vital to our understanding of the case. We are reviewing all of the information we received and are following up on every lead. 
Attention to detail and the diligence are the most important aspects of this investigation. We are committed to transparency and will provide updates when possible. Madeline's story has touched the hearts of many. Rest assured, our department is diligently working on the investigation. And while we appreciate the public's interest, we must prioritize the, pub the integrity of the investigation. We appreciate your support and understanding as we gather the facts. We intend to release additional information in the future, providing more details that we do not compromise the ongoing investigation. We vow to do everything in our power to ensure Madeline's memory is honored with justice. Our detectives are dedicated to pursuing every lead, uncovering every fact, and holding those responsible accountable. Now I will open it up for any questions. Chief, I have a question. Um, we know that you're working behind the scenes during this investigation to make sure everything is in order, but what can you tell us new today that we don't already know? Um, I don't have anything new that you don't already know other than our detectives are working tirelessly day in and day out to ensure, you know, all the facts are uncovered in this investigation. Chief, is, is the mother a suspect or a person of interest in this investigation? And also with the videos that you uncovered, is there any evidence of the mother's involvement on any of these videos? So everyone that was close to Madeline is considered. She said that numerous times, everyone that is close to Madeline is considered a potential suspect. Um, really doesn't clear anyone, but really also doesn't satisfy what the inquisitive questions by the press. Suspect until we have proven otherwise. Chief, how close are we able to know what actually happened to Madeline Soto? Well, you know, this is a very sensitive and, um, you know, it's, it's very intricate. We want to make sure that we uncover every single fact and all the evidence before, you know, we don't want to put a timeline on it, basically, you know, because the detectives are very meticulous in what they do. And we want to be sure that everything is uncovered that possibly can. No, ma'am, we are still waiting on the medical examiner's report. We're still uncovering all of those details. Um, I'm not going to speculate on that until we have the facts. Chief, can you tell us, tell us if Stephen Stearns acted alone? In you know, uh, Rosemary Gallagher, uh, I started out, <laughs> thank you for this comment. Uh, I must have missed what the sheriff said, but by saying that the autopsy would not be made public because of domestic violence tells us who killed her, someone in the home. Rosemary, um, I started out the show with that, with that very premise right there. In fact, went back frequently to this thumbnail. Medi medical examiner won't release autopsy findings because it's domestic violence equals homicide. So thank you. But yeah, I started out the show with that very, very, pre that very premise. All of this. We're still uncovering all the evidence. I don't want to speculate whether he was or not. Um, we will wait until the investigation, you know, is completed to make that determination. As Stephen Stern said, he acted, acted alone. Or what has he said in interviews with you? Since he, we know he's in jail. He, yes. What has he told you about other people's involvement, if any? He has invoked his right to a lawyer, so we have not spoke with him. Chief, that... I, I don't want to rush my detectives. I think it's paramount that they take their time. And, you know, Mr. Stearns is not going anywhere. You know, he's in jail and he's going to be there for a while. So my detectives, you know, I want them to be, you know, just look at every single detail and make sure. Um, but I don't want to give a timeline at this point. So not really, um, I wouldn't say that they've released an information. We depend on the medical examiner's report for our, our report. So we're going to have to wait until they release that report. Did you remove your arguments with one of the homes? Uh, no, it appears that this all was isolated to the home. She wow. Right there, guys. She gave us a huge, a huge bit of information right there. And 
everyone complained that this, um, well, we can't even call it a press conference, more or less giving information, but she gave a big piece of information right there. Until they released that report. Did you believe there are any additional victims? Uh, no, it appears that this all was isolated to the home. There you go. So she gave us some really important information, maybe not even intending to, but the fact that the, um, and again, I'll put it on the screen because the fact that the medical examiner won't release the autopsy findings because it's domestic violence. Where did it happen then? Where does domestic violence cases happen? They happen in the home. See? Yep. I think our questions are being answered slowly but surely, um, you know, for the integrity of the investigation, we have to, you know, keep things close um, until such time as we hold those accountable for her death. Chief, do you feel like this is taking longer than it should because Stearns is not speaking? No, I just think that, you know, sometimes these investigations are just very lengthy. Um, we know that he is in jail and he is not going anywhere. So the detectives are just making sure they cross their eye or cross the T's and dot their eyes. You know, they, they want to put together, you know, a foolproof investigation. Chief, is the mother and the family members being cooperative and answering questions? Have they lawyered up? And also the father of Madeline, who is not a Florida resident, is he a part of this investigation or at least being asked questions? We have interviewed, um, you know, all those family members that are close. Uh, mother has cooperated. She did give us an interview. Um, so there's, you know, no one is, is not cooperating other than. See, she didn't totally answer the question there because she, she used the past tense saying uh, the mother has cooperated and no one in the family has been uncooperative. But does that mean that perhaps could Jennifer Soto have lawyered up? The statement by the chief certainly didn't close the door on that, right? She just said she, we have interviewed her. So they have interviewed her in the past. Does that mean that she didn't indicate whether she lawyered up or anything? So we, we still don't know for sure. Right. So all of the charges are with uh, children under the age of 18 and, you know, they are protected. Their identity is protected under the law. It's been a, uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Nobody has charged for the murder of Madeline. Nobody knows exactly what happened to Madeline. We just can't expect in the next couple of days that someone is going to face charge for the murder of Madeline Soto. When the detectives put their case together, you know, like I said before, they want to ensure their investigation is tight. We're working, you know, hand in hand with the state attorney's office to ensure, you know, every piece of evidence is revealed and uncovered. So I can't put a timeline on when that might be. And Chief, with his cell phone, there's one thing I understand here. So he originally went to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. At least that's what we understand. He gave his cell phone to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office then found something on his phone, which led to an arrest. In the arrest affidavit from Kissimmee PD, it says he offered his phone freely to Kissimmee PD. Can you kind of explain how that happened? Because I just have a tough time understanding how somebody who's been arrested for something on his phone freely gives a phone up to him. Well, I don't know the intricate details of, I do know that the Orange County Sheriff's Office and Kissimmee Police Department were working hand in hand, you know, uh, during, you know, the, um, the actual disappearance investigation. So I don't want to speak on exactly how that happened, but it's not uncommon for us to ask um, someone if they want to, you know, give up their phone. Well, a lot of things keep me up at night. Um, you know, m my takeaway from this is talk to your children, families, talk to your kids. Um, know that there are um, agencies out there, the abuse hotline, help now, you know, that people can report suspicion to. And I would encourage mothers and fathers to have those conversations with the kids and uh, and be aware. Last question. Last question. Have you guys investigated? Not for anything like this, no, ma'am. I'm sorry, can you just confirm how long that relationship was before the 
that is still um, being under investigation. We're trying to get the timeline for that. Chief, I have one more question. This is a case that uh, became really big um, out of nowhere for a lot of people, but what has the department learned through all of this so far? Well, this was a very tragic event. Um, you know, I think that, like I said earlier, it's a up to us, up to each family member to have those conversations with your kids and report any suspicion of abuse um, to your school resource officer, to uh, you know an adult that's a trusted adult, um, to any police officer that's out there. So just report it and let the law enforcement community um, investigate. So um, there was a lot to that. As much as people didn't like the fact that um, it was sort of like an informational. There wasn't a lot of new information. Um, people were dying to hear, what did the autopsy tell us? What do we know? Do we have the toxicology back? People wanted to know what was in his cell phone. Were there calls between him and Jennifer? They're not going to release any of that. They're not going to tell the press that. They're not going to tell the public that. That is like secretive investigative information. Uh, so they're not going to uh, release that. But what we, again, and I keep going back to it, right here, this said it all. This said what this show was going to be about. And this said new information that we didn't think we were going to find out. And we found out two very big things, didn't we, from the medical examiner not telling us, us what happened. We found out that this was domestic violence or at least ruled domestic violence. And we found out that the manner of death was a homicide. Although I think most of us assumed that, right? We assumed, oh, this is going to be a homicide. And the police already know it, but they're just not telling us. Well, I think we all probably assumed that, didn't we? That yeah, this this is this is a homicide, and uh, the police just aren't saying it right now, right? And there's the person, most likely is the perpetrator, in this, right? And we want to find out if there was any involvement by Madeline, uh, excuse me, by Jennifer Soto, who you see in this thumbnail. Uh, and certainly, as we follow this case, as we watch this case, certainly her behavior uh, didn't make us any less suspicious. In fact, probably made us a lot more suspicious, didn't it? And then we see on the screen, Stefan Stearns' car there with the donut on the, the left rear tire and he was someone reported seeing him chaining a tire near the location where madeline's body was found so all of these things are very strong pieces of circumstantial evidence right circumstantial evidence from which inferences are drawn right and sometimes you'll hear people say oh uh, circumstantial evidence isn't that strong. Well, guess what? It's pretty damn strong when piled up really high when you got a lot of circumstantial evidence. Cat H, domestic abuse is typically manifested as a pattern of abusive behavior toward an intimate partner in a dating or family relationship where the abuser exerts power and control over the victim. Well, thank you for that definition, Cat H. Absolutely. Um, DCPNW, my oldest turned 33 this week. We planned an adventure for her birthday, and we're running a 5K tomorrow together. I tell her I love her every day. Same with her brother. Gotta love your kids. 100% DCPNW, absolutely. Um, you know, guys, when I... I don't like to just repeat things uh, that that are out there, but when I see something that's reported, and a lot of people on YouTube have covered this case, but not a lot of people did a follow-up on what was reported yesterday. 
and as I, the more I looked into it, the more I realized that, yeah, this is a big deal. This is pretty important, at least from the point of knowing some new things that came out and perhaps reported inadvertently from, uh, from the medical examiner's office. But nonetheless, important, important information that came out and told us, yes, this is a homicide and it's domestic violence, which means right away we can say it happened inside the home. So we learned three things. It's a homicide, it's domestic violence, and it happened inside the home. So yesterday's press conference or information from Chief Betty Campbell wasn't a nothing burger. It actually was something. Folks, if you're looking for a great attorney in the New York City metropolitan area, then Joe Murray is your man. Joe's a retired NYPD police officer and a fantastic defense attorney. You can reach Joe on his cell at 718-514-3855. Email him at joe at jmurray-law.com or go on his website, jmurray-law.com. Not only is Joe a fantastic defense attorney, but a huge supporter of the Police Off the Cuff podcast. Well, folks, that's going to be our, our show today, unless I, I could go to the chat if you have any uh, new comments uh, in the chat. Um, Blue Lazarou, these abuses have caused me to ache, knowing some of the city children I see are abused this way. Secret anguish of these as they try continuing normal in society. Uh, I think you're right. Um, uh, Christina, Jojo Fo, show, show. Yes, that's the video. Does Stern's look seem worried to you? The cop was very good in keeping things calm and not giving Stern time to think. Pessa, at work this week, I listened to all these P. Diddy conspiracy YouTubers, and they were right. Diddy is a bad dude. Yeah, it could be. Um, Schmitty, thank you. Have a good day. Schmitty, thank you for stopping by. Always good to see you. Uh, Simi Sharp, thanks for another great show, Bill. Well, Simi Sharp, thank you so much for attending, and stop. thank you for stopping by on a Saturday afternoon. Folks, I want to uh, thank everyone for stopping by today. And again, if you're not subscribed, if you're new to the channel, just hit that subscribe button. It's free. Give us a thumbs up. Ring that bell. Hit the like button. Uh, we appreciate all you folks that support this show. Have a great day, everyone, and God bless. One episode, just say